work with people and and I was similar to what you're saying there you want to you want to tell people 20 different things in one on mm. training session and I kind of get lost a little bit I'm like am I saying the right thing am, am I giving enough what how do you how do you balance like giving enough in a coaching session to giving uh like too much or like too little and where and then yeah. your mind sits in the middle there somewhere kind of tussling with both of them um that's an interesting thing to um think about is the mindset of the coach i think often when you go and get coaching you just think oh well, you know they know all about their sport and they they just talk as if they're not thinking but there's a lot going on in your brain as a coach definitely yeah what you've just said there is something that constant it should be happening I, I think in your head as well am i giving enough am i giving too much am i giving too much is probably the harder one mm. to get in your head i talk all the time on my headsets when i'm talking to my clients i literally don't stop talking and it's mm. sometimes too much i've been told there's time for pause and breaks and it is it is you know it might seem like you're just getting on with it without thinking as a coach but you're really i mean the art of a coach is is the planning of the session and knowing when someone's tired or when they need a break when you need a break there's so much to do a great coaching session that you I mean unless you're speaking to lots of other coaches all the time which I, I actually I don't so much in my sport because there isn't so many around me it's not such a big sport maybe as yours you're not aware is, is that the case with your sport do you speak to other coaches and share ideas and yeah well like that? i think from my point of view coaching for me is especially with cricket um it's one of the things i do it's not everything that i do but it's, it's something i'm very passionate about because everything that i i guess my whole coaching philosophy whether i'm coaching movement breath work meditation or whether it's even the skill based stuff it's all underpinned for me with uh, building confidence within that person in whether it's confidence in their skill, their body, but whether I'm speaking to people, I, one, I look to educate myself constantly. So I look for people of sort of, um, that are, that are good coaches that are, that have, have coached well in the past. They've been good leaders and trying to pick out little bits from them. So I read and I listen and, and hear how they did things and try to marry up because I also want to have my own way of doing it. I also want to have my own yeah. philosophies that I bring into the coaching world and the way in which I do it. Because I don't want to, I, I don't necessarily want to talk to too many people and get lost in what they do okay, and then yeah. lose what I do well. So I know what I do well, That's which important. is I, I bring my enthusiasm, I bring passion and I bring um, uh, an empathy and, and guess definitely compassion towards the, the athletes as well mm -hmm. as my knowledge which I then think of is the knowledge is kind of the the last little bolt on that you really yeah. is a, is a good thing to add on because if you don't have that skill set of of being able to communicate and understand yeah. and 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 really f f kind of gauge that person that you're working with um mm -hmm. you you don't you don't end up being that good a coach but when I'm speaking we have we'll have assistant coaches that we'll work with and my role like this year and next year is is to create the structure so because I've obviously got you're working with someone that's one on one in the water and I will work with one on one with a lot of people. But when we're in a team environment, you need to um, you need to create a, a structure of how training works so that if I'm creating the structure and I'm creating the message, do I have people below me that are willing to send the same message? So right now I'm in a bit of a process because we're in the off season where. I'm looking to find those people for next year. So we might have lost some people from last year, but for me, it's really about like the character of the individual, the person I'm working yeah. with and the coaches that are going to then um, help them spread the message and add as well. Because like I said, I'll take information from anyone. Um, I, I believe everyone's opinion is valuable. Just whether you, the information they give and the knowledge they give, whether you use it or not, that's a completely different thing because um, you have to make mm. sure it's going in the right direction of what you think as a coach is right. Um, yeah, when you're working with other people, I guess it's beside you. So sometimes I do one-to-one, -one, but you could turn up and do a day of 10 people or you could do a audio session of you know, 30 plus of people. But the people that are working on your team you would all, you know, I've had some other coaches work alongside me and I agree that you want them still to maintain their, you know, who they are and what they do because it has to come across natural as a totally, coach. Totally, yeah. And you can't really, but as, you know, as long as they've got the same beliefs as you and that you're kind of in line, that's, 
that's a nice place to be when you know who those people are around you. You don't, you just know you're on the same page and that's just probably why you became friends in the first place or why you're in touch anyway is that you just share the same values and beliefs. It becomes very easy to work with people like that. Yeah.